Are you ready, Irene? Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your guiding and instructing of us. We pray that you will be blessed by the things that we learn and, and understand, and eventually we take out to other people so that they can be blessed by you. We thank you and praise you in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, so today's lesson is, is who's in charge here? And it's about self-control. Now, I know none of you need this, but so I'm pe preaching to the choir, right? I'm actually, I actually wrote this specifically for me. <laughs> now, have any of you ever had any problems with self-control? <laughs> Tempted by the cookie jar or, <laughs> or, you know, somebody cuts you off in traffic. And I had an experience one time. We're driving down the road, and I'm with my buddy that I'm going to college with, and he has this really hot car. I mean, it is hopped up. It is, it's got a blower sticking out of the, out of the hood and like that. And, you know, he even has a detachable steering wheel, so when he parks it, he doesn't have to set the alarm. He takes the steering wheel with him, you know. <laughs> and so he's, we're driving down the highway, and this guy pulls up beside us, and he, uh, he starts revving his engine, you know, puts it in neutral or whatever. It revs his engine, trying to get my buddy to egged on to kind of get going. And so, you know, my buddy slows way down, and lets the guy pass him. And so the guy gets in front of him and slows down and, you know, nearly to a stop my buddy gets out and goes around him and trying to be good about this well um the guy just does this two or three times and my my buddy belongs to a firing range he, you know he has he has lots of weapons and he he goes to the firing range on a regular basis has has you know, a permit to carry a concealed weapon and so this guy you know about the third time pulls up beside him and my buddy ethan pulls from his center console a Desert Eagle. It's a 50 caliber handgun. And sticks it against the window. And the guy goes, <laughs> <laughs> We need tools for self-control sometimes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> this guy was not interested in road rage. <laughs> so, you know, we definitely need um, self-control. This is Wikipedia's definition. Self-control is the ability to control one's emotions, behaviors, and desires in the face of external demands in, in order to function in society. Sounds reasonable, right? I mean, that kind of encompasses it. Galatians 5.23 says self-control. And when it talks about self-control, it uses the, the Greek word echarnia, echardia. Go ahead. And Croatia, there you go. Which means possessing power, strong, having mastery or possession of. Okay? And so both of those are great definitions. But, you know, we, we might know how to define it, but we need to know how to have it. Okay? So did anybody have any self-control issues over the holidays? <laughs> Uh, you know, I don't, like I said, I wrote this specifically for me. I wasn't thinking of any of you guys, okay? Um, what about some of the things like that, that are not good for you? Anybody have any problems with those? Okay. You know, I went on a trip to Indiana for, for Christmas, and I was not in control of my diet. I mean, it's hard to eat a, a normal or a good diet when you're on the road, and then when you get to the end destination, if they don't have the same diet you are, it's somewhat of a struggle, okay? Um, are you doing enough of the good things? Anybody have any self-control problems with the good things? Nobody. Good. <laughs> well, uh, you know, self-control might be getting up in the morning and having a de devotion or getting up in the morning and going for a walk or, or you know, um, exercise. But it's, it's all the good stuff. Okay. Um, any procrastination? Okay. Um, not doing things that, that make others stumble. Anybody have any problems there? <laughs> you know, I, I, I could get my toes stepped on pretty easy, and pretty soon I'm out of control, you know. And it might be that I say something that I shouldn't have or what have you. And so, you know, we wind up 
you know, doing stuff that we're out of control with, okay? And so these are the things we want to have tools for. <clears throat> the University of Pennsylvania asked 2 million people 24 different skills. They asked them about these 24 different skills, okay? Self-control self was overwhelmingly at the bottom of the list. It is by far the hardest, okay? Benjamin Fr Franklin made a list on a regular basis. His purpose was to become perfect. You know, he wanted to, to, to scratch that one off his list. Okay, I've attained that, and I am moving on. Well, guess what, ha what appeared right after he stopped concentrating on it? The thing that you just crossed off the list. <laughs> okay? So, you know, we, it's, we've, we've got to have some, some tools to deal with these things. Okay. So why would we, I mean, other than having anarchy, why would we need self-control? Um, self-control, it keeps us in check, self-destructive, addictive, obsessive, and compulsive behaviors. It keeps those in control, okay? It gives you a sense of mastery over your life. It brings you into balance, in, uh, um, into, in, it brings balance into your life. Self-control helps you to over keep over emotional responses in check remember what I said you know somebody can step on my toes and all of a sudden you know I'm out of control that's where it's gonna help you know as a, we call it biting our tongue or something like that okay so we want to we want to be in control especially if something we say could hurt somebody or damage or or you know we might do something that we would regret okay um, it helps to manifest mental and emotional detachment which can Contributes, contributes to peace of mind, okay? Um, it's, it's important that sometimes, you know, we're not so emotionally wound up in something. We need to be able to draw back, and that's self-control, okay? It enables us to control moods and reject negative feelings and thoughts. Self-control stre strengthens our self-esteem. If we have control over what's going on with us, then, you know, we feel better about ourselves, all right? Um, yes. Self-control eliminates the, the feeling uh, helplessness and being too dependent on others. Did I miss that? Okay. And so we don't want to feel helpless. You know, we're, we want to be, you know, of course, we need to depend on the right powers, right? Okay. So um, self-control strengthens self-esteem, uh, confidence, inner strength, self-mastery, and willpower. You know, some of us can pull ourselves up by the bootstraps. Not all of us can do that. It's a, it's a little difficult at times. Okay? Um, it enables you to take charge over your life. It makes, makes you a responsible, trustworthy human being. Okay? Okay. Um, even if you, we have, we, we know we need it, sometimes there are things that get in our way. Isn't that correct? Yes. I was uh, going through a devotional last night or, or over the last week, and there was something that uh, the, the lady s said in this. Her name's Stor Stormy or Martin. Mm -hmm. I think that's what it is, isn't it? Joyce Myers, sorry. And something that she said is God wants us he does not want a weak, small-minded person that is being stepped on and kicked. That is not his hope and desire for us. He wants us to be the ones that stand up, take charge, walk out in front, and lead all the rest of the people to him. And so Satan, on the other hand, if he can get into us and take our little brain and go, oh, you're not quite as good as you thought you were. Oh, you're, you need a lot of help. You got a lot of things going on. Oh, you know, this thing, it really, that has to really bother you a lot. When he does that, self-control starts going down. And it takes God and you to look at it and say, Satan, get behind me. It is time for me to stand up the Lord said he's going to make a path for me. He's going to be there every step of the way. 
and that is why the helpless and hopeless and those types of feelings, if you feel them, you're ever thinking about them, guess who they're coming from? Number one guy. You just put your arm out, put, a, put your arm around him and say, hey, Satan, how you doing? I appreciate you being here today. And if that's not what you want to do, push him aside, get down and pray and say, Lord, I need you now. Well, and we need to know who we are. That helps us with the self-esteem. We need to know that we're children of God, right? And so by being the children of God, the Bible says that we are the head and not the tail. And so, you know, and he, it's going to take some strong individuals to finish the work that God has for us, okay? And so, but even with that, there are things that could get in our way. A lack of knowledge or understanding of, of uh, what self-control really is. Anytime there's a lack of knowledge or, or um, education that is, that is decreased or you don't know about something, you have a little insecurity there. And it can cause, to, it, it can, it can cause some, um, a little bit of self-control issues. Um, strong and uncontrollable emotional response. You know, if somebody gets under your skin, that can cause you to have some self-control problems. You see that? See how that could be? Okay. I mean, I've I've been right there with those people who get under my skin. <laughs> okay. Um, reacting to uh, outside stimuli without thinking first. Okay. Part of the part of the self-control thing is to always be present in what's going on in your life, okay? And if you, if, if you are prone to act before you, you analyze, there can be a problem. So you would, have a, you would actually have, have, you know, an action that hadn't been thought through. And, you know, that's going to be part of what's going to keep us controlled, you know, self-control, okay? Um, the lack of di discipline and willpower. You know, if you've never been taught or, you know, we grew up in a, in a society where everything is right now, immediate, and self-gratification and, and things like that, where you are, are being given whatever you want and then there's a delay or, you know, you know you'd, it's not um, as quickly as you wanted it to, you know, and you've never developed these, these skills, there could be a problem, right? Okay. Um, the lack of desire to, to change or improve. I mean, the reality is, is that most of, the, of us in this class, we want to feel better both physically and emotionally, right? And that's what we're, what we're talking about. But if you don't have any desire to change, then there can be a problem. You know, um, conversely of having a very high self-esteem, is having a higher self-esteem than you actually should, you know. <laughs> so we, you know, we need some balance there. So you know, um, considering self self-control as a limiting and unpleasant unple activity, you know, even God puts restraints on us so that we don't do stuff that's harmful to us. We don't we don't want to be doing things that are, uh, you know, just because they may be pleasurable, you know, whether it's, you know, I get into the cookie jar and now I'm, you know, I, I like this cookie. But, you know, if I continue to do that, it would be a destructive act at some point, you know, you know, 300 pounds later. So, you know, if, it, if I felt, well, my self-control is getting in the way of my cookie jar, you know, then I've got a problem, okay? Um, the belief that, that self-control eliminates fun. And we know that's not true, right? Right? Come on, I'm looking for some agreement here. Uh, we know that's not true, right? <laughs> okay, so um, you can have self-control and have fun too. Um, you know, we don't want, self, we don't want the uh, uh, not having self-control to harm other people either because sometimes our action doesn't just, it doesn't just center on us. Yeah. Uh, something that God says in the Bible very clearly is he wants us to be like he wants us to be like children and being like children if you think of it when a child goes out of the house to go play what is he thinking about oh that dirty person they 
man, they make me feel so angry. No, that's not in their, that's not in their field of thought. It's, I want to go play and have fun. That's what God wants for us. So um, self-control does not eliminate fun. It is actually when you start stop wanting to go out and have that fun, that's when the problem's there. You can see that, oh, I need to rein back. I don't know. I've never been a workaholic in my life except for the last 50 years. <laughs> you know, I was to told you work hard, you work and you get all the work done, and then when you're done with work, well, you got to go find more work because you got to get more done. But I'm finding out now that I'm old that uh, it's actually really nice to stop and say, hey, I don't need to do that. Especially when you put it in front of your, your family, your kids, your wife, your husband. When it goes in front of other people that you want to show love to or in front of God, Oh, well, you know, I can't take the Sabbath off. I, I got too much work. I got I to gotta do this. I got to do that. All that type of stuff. Um, we're designed to take and to enjoy life. And if life loses its enjoyment, you can see all those things up there. Uh, it may be a, a misunderstanding, a uh, lack of faith in oneself and one's abilities. Oh, my gosh. I could. All right. Well, don't I, be stealing my thunder. Then. All right. I'll stop. <laughs> Anyway, I, I, I just mainly wanted to say that God wants us really to have fun. Yeah, and he says we're supposed to be like little kids. Yes. I think as well, I think as well what I heard Tad saying too was that there is balance. Right. And that, and that if you're putting something, and like our culture may have made it so that we tend to think that the only thing that's really worthwhile having is making sure that you are capable of having as much fun as possible. So having... Um, balance back right. in and that you don't put that you don't put fun above god well but essentially and, and end. balance um balance can be in all things you know whether it's recreation whether it's work whether it's family and and part all of that is is self-control who gets to make those calls you know and if i'm sitting at the office at nine o'clock at night and i haven't went home and spent time with my children or things like that that was within my control at some point you know, I might have booked it, and I have an obligation now to say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. But at some point, I could have said, oh, you know what, I think, you know, 6 o'clock is a good cutoff instead of 9 o'clock. Okay? And so that, that's definitely um, what we want to we work on. Now, many people just say, oh, well, you know, willpower. You, could, you, uh, you just pull yourself up by the bootstraps, and, and you take control. Okay, how's that working for most of you? <laughs> uh, you know, I've I've never I've been I've at times I've been pretty self confident and, and pretty self uh, I, I could control myself and like that. At other times I couldn't. You know, I I couldn't just say, oh well, I've got it all together. You know, and, and like that. So you know, um, some people can pull themselves up by, by the bootstraps. Um, other people can't do that. Um, we need a lot of help. We need, we need external um, tools to work through this so that we can get what, what we need. How many of you knew that this was a fruit of the Spirit? Okay. Um, who's got a Bible? We're going to open up to Galatians 5.23. And in, in that passage, it's called temperance. So when you're, whoever's going to read it, when you get there, raise your hand and Tad will give you the, the um, microphone. Okay, 523. 523. Hold Gentleness. The, hold the, uh, Gentleness, self-control, against such there is no law. Okay. And the, the passage before that, what was that? What was, what's that passage called? The, the fruit of the Spirit. It's the fruit of the Spirit, right? Now. If it's a fruit of the Spirit, does God expect us to have it? He does. He wants us to have it. He wants us to, to have it to the degree that it, it glorifies Him, right? He wants, it, he wants us to have self-control in all things. You know, and when we're talking about, you know, a neighbor um, 
cuts down their tree and it falls on our side and they tell you, you've got to clean it up. You know? <laughs> Self-control might have a tendency to move out of the way. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But we're supposed to have control, self-control in all things. When Paul was slammed into prison, I mean, I'm sure that he had every, every uh, um, intent, not intention, he had, he had, by human rights, he had the right to complain. You know, had he done anything wrong? I mean, you know, he might have violated the law of man, but he certainly didn't violate the law of God. And so, you know, being thrown into jail was not something that he, he it, was, it was somewhat out of his self-control, but his reaction to it was not. Something that's kind of interesting is he used to throw people into prison for the same reason. For the same reason. That's right. Okay, so let's open to uh, 2 Peter 1, 6. And when you have it, raise your hand and, and uh, Tad will give you the microphone. Second Peter. Somebody have it? I'm going to read from verse 5. Okay. For this very reason, we make, make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness. Okay. So, do you see how how building our faith and our our um, personal attributes, self-control or temperance, needs to be in there? I mean, as Christians, we are, we need to be self-controlled. Now, if even if we're not talking about being Christians, we you know. Many of us get in trouble if we're having a weight problem or an anger problem or something like that with self-control. I mean, you know, if I if I go home at night and I I you know gluttonly eat and then have you know half a cake, you know something's out of control, right? Am I going to lose weight that way? No, I'm going to have a problem. And so you know, it's good for us in every aspect of our life. Um, developing self-control, there are several different things that we can do, okay? I'm going to give you a very general, uh, about eight, eight different things that are kind of general, and then I'm going to break it down into three things that are absolutely essential, okay? So make a list of the positives and negatives in your life, okay? It's important to know where you are. I mean, if you are unable to keep your temper when somebody um, crosses you, that's a place that you can work on. If you're unable to keep yourself from indulging in a cookie after work or, or what have you, that's a place you need to work on. However, you may not have any problem with road rage. That's a positive, right? I don't get excited when somebody cuts me off. I just back up and let them in, you know? That's a good thing. Um, research it in the areas that you are lacking, so, lacking control, okay? So if there is a problem that you have, there may be some, some beneficial things that you can do in order to, to make that better, you know, whether it's mood or whether it's um, uh, staying away from certain things. You know, <clears throat> if an alcoholic gets off, gets off, the, off of uh, alcohol and that person drives the same route that they've always driven and there happens to be their favorite bar alongside the road, you know, they may not have enough self-control to keep from turning their car into that, into that parking lot. And so, you know, we need to be aware of, of things that are going to give us a problem. Gradually increase your ability of self-denial. How many of us like self-denial? Come on, I thought I saw your hands a minute ago. <laughs> None of us like self-denial. I mean, you know, it's hard on us. 
uh, but, you know, um, Paul makes a statement. He says, you know, I deny myself that I might win the race. Okay? So we need to, we need to practice self-denial. Enlist family, or friends and family to help you. Isn't that important? Um, it's important to have people around you who expect a higher calling. You know, somebody who is able to be, you're able to be accountable to. Back here, Maria. Just a second, Maria. He's going to bring you something so we can hear you. <laughs> it's more for the camera. You know, uh, we can do nothing without the help of our Heavenly Father. That's right. You know, and, and so in order to recognize some of uh, denying ourselves, we have to be so praying in contact, uh, praying for the Holy Spirit. And I think, you know, God, little by little, will help us and start showing us, okay, Maria, are you doing this? Yeah, uh, you need to start working on that. And it's, he is helping us to be aware of it through the Holy Spirit. That's right. And we need to constantly be praying for the Holy Spirit to give us the understanding, to follow in the steps of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's right. Absolutely. Um, now, this is going to sound a little, a little funny, but distract yourself. Okay? I, I've got an il illustration here in just a second. Um, this is along the lines of what Tad said. You know, we need to relax sometimes. We need to give ourselves permission to slow down and not be so engaged all the time. Because if we're engaged all the time, we can be more excitable. And we want to be relaxed and, and um, less excitable for sure. Um, think about what, you're, what you want to accomplish. If you have a clear goal and clear mission, things are you, you don't have a lot of time for distractions or things like that, and it gives you some focus. Things don't get on your nerves as much, okay? And so we want to make sure that, that you know, you know where you're going. So set some goals and, and things like that. This is really important. Do you know that this is what Jesus does? Don't beat yourself up when you fail. You know, thank God we have an advocate. And if we fall, what happens? He picks us up. It's not, you know, it's, it's very personal. He, set, he reaches down and he grabs Mark by the hand and he picks him up to where he's standing again and says, okay, keep going. You know, and he, he encourages us and wants us to, to do our very best. But if we fall, all he asks is that we get back up and keep going. You know, how many of you have had children? How many, when that child fell down for the very first time, you said, well, it's over, you're done, you'll never walk. <laughs> you might as well, you know, just, we'll, we'll get you a, a chair and you can, we'll wheel you around for the rest of your life. Anybody? I, I didn't think so, because God wants his children to walk effectively also. Ted. You know, there was the uh, woman who was caught in prostitution. It wasn't her first time down the walk. That was her seventh time. And what did, after everyone said, we want her dead, want to stone her, what did God say to her? I see no accusers, and I do not accuse you either. If God is not accusing you, then who is? Oh, the only one that's really good at accusing you, that's Satan. Again, you know, you can do the buddy deal. Hi, Satan, how you doing? Glad you're here. Time for you to go away. God does not beat us up over our failures. He says, you are now, you now see what I have seen. And now you have the, uh, the thoughts or the feelings to move yourself ahead. Sometimes it takes a long time for it to get really bad. You know that two by four you've said to God, hey, if I'm really not doing this right, get out the two by four or, or take and really shake me up. That's what he does. And when he does that, guess what? That's when change comes about. Right. But he does not hold you accountable for past failures. 
Okay. So here are the three things that if you don't get anything out of this, I want you to write down. I want you to take this with you. And sorry for not making notes and, and giving you paper today, but um, I didn't. <laughs> um, it's very important to control what you think. Now, um, have you ever tried to think, not think about something? Okay, so a little exercise we've done before. It, now, I want you all to think of an elephant. Okay, you got an elephant? Okay, stop thinking about it. <laughs> okay, not possible, right? We can't stop thinking about something that, without thinking about something else. And when we think about something else, we could go to the scriptures and we can go to a lot of different places that are uplifting and think about things that are not out of control, right? You know, if we are praying for self-control and we, I, we have a temperament issue or what have you, we can pray and God will answer that prayer. We can start reading and thinking uh, in another direction and God will give us peace and God will, sh will show us how we are to control that particular situation. Okay, but we can't, you know, I don't know how many of you ever have ever had an addiction or something like that, but the more you think about that thing, the more it draws you in, the closer you become to it, and it will take over you unless you think of something else, unless you stop thinking of it and put something in there that's worth thinking about. You know, in Philippians it says, whatever is of good report, think on these things, Right? So it's very important what we think about. Optimizing your environment. Listen, if you're having trouble and you pull, you know, you have to drive by that bar on the way home, you know, change your way home. Right? If you have an eating problem, then, you know, don't go to the grocery store hungry, but also don't buy things that are going to tempt you when, you know, when you do get home, okay? Um, Revelation, Revelation 13, let's, let's read that, okay? So, somebody um, pull that up and then raise your hand when you're ready because I'll, I'll have you read it. Revelation 13, 14. And you might read a verse one way or the other of it just to make it make sense. Hold it. Let, let's get the uh, the mic so everybody can hear it. And deceive them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do, and the side of the beast, that, saying to them that dwell on the earth. That, that's the wrong verse. Is it? Again, yeah, is it thirteen? Let me... Uh, Chapter 13. Oh, here right there. Huh? Well, now I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. But it says, make no provision for the flesh. And if somebody finds that. I, I, I believe it's, obviously I thought it was Revelation 13, 14. Um, but, um, you know, when we are, um, when we are tempted, it's real easy to sway if we've made provision for that. You know, if, if I'm on a diet and I bring home cookies, what's going to happen? Romans. Romans 13, 14. <laughs> so go ahead and read that. Um, okay. It's Romans thirteen fourteen. Uh, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. Okay. You hear that? And, you know, it goes on and says, you know, you shouldn't make provision for sin. And so, you know, a definition of sin is, a, is somebody who knows to do right and does it not. Okay. And so we need to make sure that our environment is in such a condition that we don't 
we don't have a problem with our anger or our eating or you know whatever you know it's going to cause us to slip and fall okay uh, something that you want to remember too is in the perfect garden of eating Eden walking with God the first sin was committed so even though you got everything around you perfect it is still possible to have problems with the flesh and what was the first sin it was appetite it was not it was not eating the apple everyone thinks well it was eating the no it wasn't it was a desire above what was what God said to have they wanted to have more than God provided for them and so when you look at the things in your life that are going on you can look at that my wife pointed that out to me very clearly I always thought it was well they ate from the apple they ate from the tree that was a sin no my wife pointed out and said no the sin was it was their appetite right, right. and right. when you look at lust you can look at it will also be an appetite an appetite that's right okay so the, the next one that is crucial is accountability okay and if any of you have ever tried to stop something that you were habitually doing having somebody who expects a higher level of you is crucial you know being able to say okay you know I mean my wife is a, is a great accountability partner because you know if there's something in my life that I know that she doesn't approve of it's unlikely that I'm going to do it most of the time you know, I, <laughs> I gotta have a caveat in there because <laughs> I slip and fall <laughs> but you know you see what I'm saying my wife will say you know what maybe we shouldn't be doing that or you shouldn't be doing that and so I re have to reevaluate my position and say okay what am I going to do and when we have you know when I walk into the church you know I have everybody around me who is basically my accountability partners because they expect me to act a certain way and if I act outside of that you know if I if I did something that was wrong and the church found out about it I might be embarrassed and, I, and so the church is is also my accountability partner I mean they I they expect me to act a certain way so you know but having somebody who is also one-on-one, -on -one, whether it's somebody you can give a, give a phone call to or somebody who you rely on for strength, that is a person who can, can pull, pull you up and say, hey, you know what? You're starting down the wrong road. You need to make some changes, and this is good for you. You know, don't go where, you think, where you're thinking about. And so um, I know that these are, are some, yes. Accountability is is very good, but two words along with that, in love. In love, I agree. You know, you don't want somebody lording over you or, or telling you what to do. You want somebody who understands where you're coming from and is able to coach you back to the right so that you, you aren't, you know, uh, you don't feel, you don't need somebody to feel, make you feel guilty. You do that really good by yourself. You know, I, I mean, I'm able to beat myself up pretty well, um, that lady in the back. <laughs> on, on my situation if someone accuses me of something or says that I have done something I don't have to own it right and as soon as I say I don't own it it's not true and and that does away with the guilt the, the guilt the, right the, but if you if you have somebody drawing you back to the right position you know, if you were swaying from that right position and drawing you back, you'd want that person, first of all, to do it in love. You want them to, to, to compassionately say, come back this way, you know, coach you off the edge. And so, you know, uh, what Guy was saying is, is very important. We need somebody to be accountable, but we need them to understand where we are and that, you know, we're coming from a bad place, wherever that is, you know, whether it's, you know, um, whatever appetite it is. Um, I think that, uh, yeah. go ahead, Dad. Uh, something that you, you, got, you, you have to remember, too, is normal speaking, if you are a good speaker, you can pump out about 300 words per minute. Your brain can speak over 3,000 
words per minute. Right. So it is 10 times faster than you can talk to yourself trying to correct the problem. And that, so know that when you start getting the self-talk going, running around in a circle, first thing you got to do is you got to stop, seek peace and calm, say, Lord, give me peace and calm on this. Bring your Holy Spirit to me. And I'll tell you what, you will see a transformation. You can actually see someone take the switch in the knob and just turn it all down. And it's like, well, I guess now it really doesn't matter too much. It's okay. For me, um, when I get to the point that I'm willing to confide in someone and say, I want to be accountable to you, the response that works best for me is if you would say to me, how can I help you? What right. can I do specifically? What would be helpful? Right. Absolutely. And it's never a judgmental position, right? You don't want somebody to tell you you've already, you, you've already messed up because you know where you are. I mean, it's it's pretty obvious when I'm when I'm messing up. I already know that I'm messing up. You know, and like Tad says, you know, it's it's not uncommon when I start down that road to say, okay, God, I want this to be taken away from me. I don't have the willpower to control it myself. And you know, as long as I stay in that mindset and that prayer, He is willing to to um, deliver me that from that. But, you know, it's not always that easy. Sometimes it takes a little more. So having an accountability partner is huge. Having somebody who expects a higher standard from you but isn't judging you when they call you back, when they say, okay, when you've called them or what have you and says, okay, you know, I'm about to eat this cookie. <laughs> and they say, oh, all right, put the cookie down. <laughs> you might need a substitute you might need something that is healthy and that goes back to that that distracting yourself you know taking your mind off the cookie because you know even if you put the cookie down it's still there <laughs> yeah don't think about the cookie it's right there <laughs> don't, don't. <laughs> that's right that's right you might go to the garbage <laughs> You mentioned Joyce Myers earlier. She has a wonderful saying, which she says, stinking thinking. That's right. And, you know, and every time I start going off on a tangent, I think, oh, stop the stinking thinking. That's right. And so, you know, it's, it's all encompassing. But this, these last three are the ones that will kind of pull you all together. Okay? Has this been helpful? Okay, good. Um... um I'm going to be doing some, some uh, uh, cleansing talks and things like that, uh, mainly because I'm going to be going through a cleanse myself. You know, I've, I've, I've uh, had my fun through the holidays, and, and I, I need to uh, kind of unsnug my pants. <laughs> so, you know, I'm going to be going through some cleanses. But, so I want to share some of that with you. And uh, we've got um, some, some cookbook stuff that we can, that we, we can share with you. Um, you know, I'll, I'll uh, give you some updates on what's going on with me and things like that. We'll be doing some juice fasting and, and uh, some general cleansing and like that. And so, um, and then we'll go, we're going to do some other things. So we're going to have a pretty good year. 